in the source. How's that? It'll do. minutes after 8 o'clock and got some cool temperatures moving in. I'm just going to keep repeating that. <laughs> I love that. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Alright, we've got some other news. These are the stories that don't fit anywhere else. So we squeeze them in right here. The first one comes out of Halifax, Nova Scotia. Ghost hunters seeking to contact the spirit of magician Harry Houdini said they will hold a seance in Nova Scotia. Really? Seances attempting to contact Harry Houdini, whose real name was Eric Weiss, have been held on Halloween yearly since the magician's death 87 years ago. And researchers said they will make an attempt this year in Halifax, where Houdini spent a week in 1896 and performed an escape at the police station. Wow. He did do his first jailbreak at Halifax City Hall, where the police station used to be. And another notable event for Houdini was his performance in Dartmouth was actually his first performance outside of the United States as a headliner, according to Bruce McNabb, a Cumberland County resident and longtime Houdini fan. The seance will be led by Alan Hatfield, a psychic and a spirit medium from Pictou Landing, and will also feature live performances from magicians and other illusionists. Wow. My specialty, he says, is EVP, which is electronic voice phenomena. I've been to the Titanic site twice... And recorded voices there and at Deadman's Island and other places through the years, Hatfield said. Houdini famously promised his wife he would send her a message from the afterlife if he found such a thing to be possible. I don't know if anybody's ever had recorded that or yeah. don't know all those stories, but they always pop up around this time of year, don't they? Yeah, or did she ever, you know, receive a message from him and didn't say anything? I don't know. Wow. I wonder if uh, magicians all over the world will get together on Halloween Eve and just you know lock themselves up in jails and try to escape. <laughs> I don't know. In honor of, Out of Houdini. Pittsfield, Maine. Police in Pittsfield say a man dressed as Bat- as Batman villain, the Joker, mm-hmm. was arrested on a drunken driving charge after he lost control of his vehicle. <laughs> Sergeant Timothy Rusin of the Pittsfield Police Department said Dennis LaLime, who is 64 years old, lost control of his car 2 a.m. Sunday and crashed into multiple trees on a rock. Okay. Rusin said LaLime told police he was going home from a Halloween party in Old Town and was cooperative with officers, so officers, so he's probably telling the truth. Yeah, there you go. I mean, who else would dress up like that? So it made the news only because he was dressed like the Joker. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, The next story is out of Washington, D.C. The White House announced President Obama hosted a wedding in the Rose Garden of his official residence for the chief official White House photographer. The White House said photographer Pete Sousa and Patty Lease were married at the White House Saturday night by White House military chaplain Stanley Fornia. Sousa has been Obama's chief official White House photographer since his election in 2008, and he served in the same position during President Reagan's second term. Mm -hmm. There you go. Wow. Well, good for him, even though we can't... Nice day for a White House wedding. That's right. Well, it's opening up again. Yeah. Thank God. It's about time. Uh, The next story is out of New York. A New York man's lawsuit alleges that he and a friend were detained by police who mistook Jolly Rancher candies for crystal meth. (gasps) Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Kenneth Smith, a lawyer (laughs) for for the... For love... Ola Tujioja, who is 25 years old. Mm -hmm. Okay. A federal lawsuit October 15th alleging false arrest, illegal search and seizure, and false imprisonment after his client and a friend were detained for 24 hours in June. Mm -hmm. Smith said his client and his friend purchased a handful of Jolly Rancher hard candies at the It Sugar Candy Emporium in June, and they were stopped a few blocks away by Officer Jermaine Taylor. Taylor, who wrote in the criminal affidavit that he had professional training in identifying methamphetamine, wrote he believed the candy to be narcotics and was fi- a field test yielded a positive result. However, further tests concluded two days later the objects were candy. Oh, <laughs> I almost brought in Jolly Ranchers today, but I opted for Starburst. So. I, I can't remember what Jolly Ranchers <laughs> are. What are they? Those are those little square things, and then they kind of look... You, you, are they hard? They, they, hard yeah, candy? they're hard, and they look translucent, and they're different colors. Hmm. Starbursts are more chewy. That's why I got them. 
Next story, also out of New York, a New York woman who used nanotechnology to create children's clothing that just doesn't stain is raising funds for her, in, her invention on the website Kickstarter. How cool is that? Her no name, stains. Her, her name is Panina First. She's an Israeli-American with a background in chemistry, biology, and biotechnology. She said the No More Bibs clothing line that she wants to create... Um, will be indeed created if she's successful in raising $40,000 in her Kickstarter campaign. Uh, the clothing is made from cotton and uses nanotechnology to have the outer layer of the fabric turn into a liquid repellent surface. Wow. It repels 99% of the liquids a child will be exposed to, including chocolate, ice cream, mud, blood, drool, paint, oil, and more. Wow. Wow. That is pretty ingenious. Good for you. It looks like she's raised 10% of what she's shooting and for. No, no more bib. That's a cool uh, cool name. I love that. Hmm. She'll get somebody to back her. Uh, the next story is out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Visitors to a Pittsburgh state to, to a Pennsylvania state park in Pittsburgh bid a fond farewell to a 40-foot tall globe-trotting rubber duck. Oh. Point State Park officials okay. said the giant inflatable duck would be towed down the Ohio River and deflated, leading fans to make a final visit to the park to say goodbye to Hoffman's installation, which has been at the park since September 27th. It's like twice as tall as the Paddock Mall, right? You think? How, how tall did it say? 40, 40 feet. 40 feet. Yeah, so that's almost twice as tall. I would say. Tall. Yeah. I Could you imagine that? A big rubber duck peering over the roof of the paddock mall. <laughs> I would say. Staring at people on 200 yeah. as they drive down the road. That would be a funny, uh, funny, uh, you know, publicity stunt. A That'd be cool. Big publicity stunt, yeah. Yeah. An Oklahoma teenager visiting an Arkansas state park where tourists are allowed to keep any gems they find discovered a diamond. That could be worth wow. thousands. Wow. 14-year-old Tana Clymer of Oklahoma City visited Crater of Diamonds State Park in Arkansas with her family on Saturday and discovered what was identified by the park's experts as a 3.8-carat canary diamond in the park's 37-acre area designated for visitors to search for and keep any gems that they discover. Wow. I kept asking my dad if I was dreaming, Clymer said. <laughs> the park does not appraise gems, but a similar diamond found in 2006 sold for $30,000. Clymer said her parents are planning to have the diamond appraised, and it will be kept in a safe deposit box until they decide its fate. Wow. My dad keeps telling me not to get my hopes up, <laughs> but it's go. too late for that, she said. She can go to medical school. We have a trip around the world. You know, that's the, that's the best idea. You invested in her future, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, the next story is out of um, London. Okay. A British company that creates products for poultry. <laughs> <laughs> Little skirts. <laughs> products Little for poultry <laughs> that is that are kept as pets. Oh. Is okay. selling reflective bibs to help chickens and roosters say, stay safe on the roads. Oh. <laughs> so they have a problem with them leaving their the yard. The company is called <laughs> Omelet. Oh, of course. Omelet director Johannes <laughs> Paul said the high vis visibility chicken jackets, which come in bright pink and bright yellow, are designed to keep <laughs> pet chickens and roosters from being struck by motorists. <laughs> we had people inquiring about this kind of thing, so I decided to look into it. Most people who have chickens as pets will have them out and about, and we do hear about chickens who do cross the road. Yeah. If you can imagine, you're in a built-up area, your chicken gets under the fence. You know, you don't want it to hit by a car, so you want to put a reflective jacket on it to stop the cars from hitting it. Yeah, so. but the jacket might get caught in the fence and then strangle the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> if there's one thing you don't want to do is choke your chicken on a fence. That's, that's what I think. You don't want that to happen. Just my th thought on this whole subject. <laughs> no, that'd be... <laughs> the next story is out of Cincinnati. The family of an Ohio soldier whose gravesite bears a pair of SpongeBob SquarePants statues said the cemetery told them the monuments would be removed. Oh, okay. Deborah Walker, mother of Army Sergeant Kimberly Walker, who 
was 28, who was found dead in a Colorado hotel room in February, oh. said the family installed the two 7,000-pound SpongeBob monuments at the family's sixth grave plot at Spring Grove Cemetery in Cincinnati as a tribute to the slain soldier who loved the cartoon character. Walker said one of the six-foot monuments wears an Army uniform for Kimberly and the other wears a Navy, uni- Navy uniform in honor of Kimberly's sister, Kara. Walker said they received approval for the monuments and they were installed October 10th. However, she said the cemetery told the family the following day the monuments were inappropriate and would have to be removed. Oh. oh that's too bad. Yeah. Somebody's, some, somebody's got some splaining to do that one. They sure do. Gosh. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Out of Sweden. Police in a town called Nykoping in Sweden say they are investigating a man's allegations that a woman stole from his apartment and then slapped him with a fish while he was sleeping. <laughs> he must have done something wrong. Investigators say the Nykoping man, who is in his 60s, oh. <laughs> called authorities to report that he was awakened from a nap by a slap across the face from a woman wielding a mackerel. <laughs> The man also alleged that the woman stole $310 from him and took food from his refrigerator. (laughs) The woman, who is also in her 60s, is known to the man. Yes. They might live together sometimes, according Uh. to the newspaper. The incident is being investigated as an assault, police said. Holy mackerel. Holy mackerel. (laughs) Something fishy about that story. I know. Everybody said that joke before I did. Everybody said it. All right. Here's another one. Um... Do I have time for this one? Out of York, Pennsylvania, a Pennsylvania mother said her nine-year-old son's pumpkin, giant pumpkin, was returned to the family porch with a note of apology from the thief. Oh. Amy Newcomer of York said her family arrived home Sunday to find the pumpkin belonging to her nine-year-old son, Jaden, had been returned several days after being taken from the same spot. Jaden, who won the pumpkin by correctly guessing its weight at the Cape Horn beverage in Windsor Township, verified the pumpkin was the same one that had been stolen by examining its distinctive markings. The boy was very excited to have his pumpkin back. And uh, the note said, I'm really sorry about taking your pumpkin. It was wrong for me. You earned the pumpkin. I didn't think my actions through, not realize they were affecting you. Sincerest apologies. Anonymous. Oh. All right, let's go forward. Mike Huckabee's coming up, and then we'll new, do News Bites. Deal? Deal. This is the Huckabee Report for Tuesday. I'm Mike Huckabee. Can Obamacare be saved with a tech surge? That story is next. Police called and broke the bad news to Charles. His personal and financial information was found on the... 